So welcome back. So this is a continuation to the previous video lecture. As already said, we will divide this time error into four regions till 1940, till 1956, and from 1956 to 1991, and from 1991 to 2003, and after that, Electricity Act 2003. So first of all, what happened in 19 till 1956? As already I mentioned, we started with somewhere around 1897 with our first hydroelectric station in Darjeeling. In 1995, we had our first electricity lighting, street lighting, and also we had our electric trains. And in 1910, we had this electricity at 19. Right. During this time, there were so many private players who started generating and they used it to transmit the electricity for the local people itself. There was no big scale of electricity industry and electricity was confined only to metros and larger cities. Almost at that time, even Hyderabad also was controlled by the Nizam rulers, even they used it to have a partial electricity. So we had this Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, Kolkata and Delhi, these used to have electricity. And it was confined to only government people, particularly the Britishers and those people who do have huge amounts of money. And next, with this 1910 Act, the Britishers who were there in charge, they had laid out some rules of how to supply electricity and what is a tariff which is to be collected and whom should get, who should get electricity and also in particular regarding the legal framework if anything happens goes wrong so they had maintained the legal framework for the development of electricity and this continued till 1947 till our independence and even after to 1948 also to be more precisely in 1948 we had this electricity supply act ESA in 1948, as already I mentioned before, till independence it was limited only to uh, major cities. In 1947-1948 when we had this presidencies came into picture, most of the states republican. We moved ourselves into a republican, democratic, socialist, sovereign. So all these things came into picture. So most of the princely states joined our country. And uh, we have divided, we have so many states in our country, like 30. During the independence time also, we had somewhere around 15 to 20 states. Now, all these states, the state governments were formed slowly. And then, during the writing of our constitution, it was made a decision. The decision was made that electricity will be a concurrent subject, which is to be handled by both central government and also the state governments. And the state governments were given complete responsibility to go with the improvement of electricity sector in their respective states. So the central government did not had any hand in generation, transmission or distribution. So during that 1948 to 1957 stage, during the first 10 years or 8 years or 9 years, the state governments were looking after the electricity sector. But the fact was that uh, uh, generation was not growing at a very fast rate. But the most important thing which happened was development of state electricity boards. Every state has set up a state electricity board to look after both the generation, to look after the generation, transmission, distribution, and utilization of the power. Then came this industry policy 1956. This industrial policy resolution, it started with growing of industries in our country. So, a complete revolution. So, industries were given prime uh, concern. Industries were given prime responsibility of developing that particular state. So, they were given many incentives. And the electricity was also provided to them for subsidies, with subsidies. And what happened between this 1950s and after this 1950s particularly, the industries, they started decreasing and in particular, 
the green revolution which happened in our state in our country in somewhere in 1970s i think yeah and somewhere in 1970s we had this green revolution during this time of green revolution we declared unofficially declared ourselves as an agricultural country we had this huge amount of agricultural production so so much production was there and uh, the reaping was also very good we had very good harvest rather than depending upon the rain we started using this bore wells technology ground water was picked up so much so what was the impact see this had an impact on the electricity sector so now since agriculture was on the rise and since industry on the other hand industries were also on the rise so immediately the picture was the agricultural sector had started consuming too much amount of electricity whereas the industries also were on the rising side so this created a huge demand for electricity in our country and one more thing what happened is uh, even though that uh, there were huge amount of losses the government was in, more inclined to setting up of generation plans and uh, to speak more precisely whether it is correct or not but uh, speaking on a public platform the political interference into the electrical sector was also very high during that region uh, there are some state governments even to this day uh, people do say that it is mandatory to provide subsidies to everyone right and uh, even to this day even in the electrical uh, elections time also many state government many parties do give their uh, they will just uh, provide promises that they will provide subsidies to agricultural sector and etc 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 so all these things happened during 1970s and the 1990s in the so many state run elections the state governments started giving subsidies to agricultural sector to whom ever the people to uh, lower middle class people to middle class people so the state governments started giving subsidies now see the picture so if you start giving subsidies to everyone then what happens automatically we don't get any income for the electricity sector so this so the on the one hand there was a huge demand for electricity on the other hand the income was not there revenue was not happening so the state governments promised subsidies so immediately who should pay the price the state governments must pay the price but the fact is that you know the electricity sector itself is run by the state governments which was not happening the money was not coming it was not rotating so immediately what happens is there was a complete resource constraint happening in the industry so there is no money see this is just like a circle you install new generation things then you transmit then you distribute then you utilize it and then you pay this will help in improving the sector the fact is that generation was happening transmission was happening but at the end of the day money was not coming back so no growth so this happened till 1990s all the electricity boards they were completely into losses many things happened many meetings happened many things happened even in 1975 during that time there were some states which were completely they had very minimal resources the state electricity boards even that states also started giving the subsidies and etc and completely the uh, electricity power sector completely came to a constant uh, low value so at that time the central government thought about implementing or uh, developing centrally funded uh, generation uh, so then came this picture of nhpc and ntpc there were so many reasons for setting up of this ntpc and nhpc but the biggest reason was that to take over the generation for uh, small states at least to help for the small states and also to provide electricity to maximum number of states so it is not that you set up an ntpc or nhpc in particular state and sell it to that particular state you can sell it to many states also so central government pay came into picture in 1975 so they started generation ntpc they set up they have set up ntpc nhpc etc 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 despite having so many measures despite taking so many measures also the electricity sector was at its worst scenario till 1991 and in 1991 one more thing happened you know 
1991, whether I think you were born or not, I don't know. In 1991, there was a concept called as Gulf War. You might know about this Gulf War. What happened during this Gulf War is that in 1991, the fuel prices were very, very high. They reached peaks. So, our per capita income, our scenario, our financial scenario was very, very poor in the country. The government was nowhere in any situation to provide money to anyone. So, the fuel prices were skyrocketing because we are a country where we do import fuel for daily purposes. We don't have fuel generation in our country. So, there was no foreign currency also. During that time, uh, it was, I have also read in the newspapers itself, maybe because of the IMF and World Bank. These two, you know that whenever a country is uh, not having any international funds and automatically the World Bank, they will get a loan from the World Bank and IMF, International Monetary Fund. During that time, when we borrow money from the World Bank and IMF, what they do is nothing but they will lay down some conditions. And one that condition was privatization, of inclusion of privatization of uh, electricity industry during 1991. So, that one suggestion was that came from that World Bank was privatization of electricity sector. Only that can improve the performance of electricity sector. So, in 1991, due to our uh, late Prime Minister P. V. Narsimharogar, he was also a fine person and economist. So, he introduced this concept of uh, private sector. He made some legislations, etc., etc., etc. So many initiatives have been taken. So in 1991, what happened is privatization was allowed completely in generation, and 100% foreign investment was allowed in electricity sector. So in 1991, when we have uh, got this one permission for a foreign investment, also next came into picture. What happened after 1991 is when you know that when private participation or foreign investment comes into picture, they will immediately talk about tariffs. Who will decide the tariffs? Till 1991 and 1992, we used to have this uh, uh, tariffs were decided by the state electricity boards. Itself. You know, state electricity boards are again run by the governments, again government agencies. So the private people they wanted. Uh, official statement from the central government. So that's why first official gazette was uh, released regarding the tariffs. And next, <coughs> next to slowly it happened, privatization increased. In, somewhere around 1997 to 1998, electricity regulatory commissions were introduced. So complete tariffs was removed from SEBs and it came to electricity regulatory commissions. So, so that private people also, whoever they are in the electricity sector, they are not dependent on the government now because the tariffs will be decided by the electricity regulatory commissions. So, at the central level, CERC was there. At the state level, SCRC was there. State Electricity Regulatory Commission. So, that came into picture in 19. This all happened in 1991 to 2003. People will think that the, this private sector and etc. etc. will improve the electricity things. But nothing has happened. Again, you know, the distribution again was vested in the hands of uh, state governments itself. You generate the power, again you are supposed to sell it to the same government. And again government will distribute it, government again will provide subsidy, they won't get money and they won't return it to the private sector. Again this happened. Till 2000 to 2002 also, do you, it is a very known fact that the electricity participation of private people in the electricity sector was nearly just only 5%. There was no considerable increase in the electricity sector till 2000 because there were so many things happening. The private sector also was looming. Uh, they had also severe losses. So it, it was just like uh, a trial which completely failed. Okay, at least partially failed. So again in 2003 to overcome all these things, a very strict act was introduced that we call it as Electricity Act 2003. And in particular, tariffs were officially decided using National Tariff Policy, NTP 2006, which was introduced as part of EA 2003. And it came into picture in 2006, National Tariff Policy. And Electricity Act 2003 was a very big book. It is just like a Bible for electricity sector in our country. 
there were so many regulations so many things so many initiatives taken and how to issue a license how to get a license who must issue a license and private participation the rules and what are the targets for our country for the state government central governments etc everything was clearly written in 2003 so from 2003 onwards with the electricity act 2003 with the implementation of national tariff policy so there was an elimination of licensing for generation product projects and next was international thing also came into picture so this has increased the performance of electricity sector in our country and several initiatives were taken up by the central government at that time uh, ujwal was there ddm was din dayal uh, was there and rural electrification also was taken up seriously by the central government and also integration of renewable energy was also taken care of. so this i hope now you have understood what is the growth of evolution of indian power sector in our country we had this post independence after independence also we struggled a lot and in particular during the time of 1951 to 1990s the state government subsidies i am not against to subsidies but the fact is that whenever you are giving subsidy to anyone you must think of how the electricity sector because electricity sector is also a thing which is to be survived right in 1990s itself electricity also started just like a commodity before that it was just like uh, it was seen like a necessity but in 1991 it started looking like a commodity by the governments right it must also be sold like any other things it is also a sector where so many people are dependent on before it was necessary it was a responsibility of the state governments but after that it became just like a commodity and now also we are there. we do have a trading center also iex indian electricity exchange where do we do trade electricity just like any other commodities okay so this i'll uh, close this session of evolution of indian power sector and in the next uh, continuation of this one we will see some more milestones which happened in our electricity sector